Hi, I'm Phoebe with Phoebe's Pure Food, and I'm here at the People Chronicles to share a story today with someone I'm very excited to introduce you to. This is B. Bon of Rice and Noodles, and she has an amazing story to tell. I'm so glad you're joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you, Phoebe. Okay, great. I'm so glad you're here. Um, B. made a journey from Lancaster from the restaurant Rice and Noodles, where she has the most fabulous Vietnamese dishes in the area. And she's doing beautiful desserts as well. But I wanted to open up with a question that we traditionally open up the People Chronicle stories with, which is, what would you like people to learn from your story today? Wow. Um, my journey starts uh, from Vietnam, actually. My parents, um, should I keep it short, like just a, a brief version of what? Sure, just give us like a, an idea okay. of like your back. I'm very curious. Um, well, just to make a long story short, um, I want people to know that our families, family in general is very resilient. And uh, from the Vietnam War to Hurricane Katrina to Lancaster, um, you know, like we we have reinvented ourselves like over the last 30 years. Well, 40, because I've been here for 40 years now. But um, yeah, like you can persevere in any hardship or anything that will set you back mm -hmm. as a family. Um, as long as you stick together, you will come out on top. Okay. Yeah. And so are you, are you first generation or? I'm the third generation restaurateur. Um, okay. My, my restaurant, uh, background goes all the way back to Vietnam. My grandfather, he was like the McDonald's of uh, Vietnamese restaurants, pho mm -hmm. restaurants in Saigon. Okay. So um, he opened, he had 13 restaurants wow. up and running before the fall of Saigon in April mm -hmm. of uh, 1975. Mm -hmm. um, I was the last child born in our generation, in my family, before we fled Vietnam to come to the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we did leave and uh, f leave Vietnam and come to the United States, uh, not only did my grandfather leave all his businesses and everything that they had worked their whole life to, uh, you know, build up to, my mom was in the restaurant business as well. And um, she started her uh, first restaurant right out of high school. She told my grandfather, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want to go to college. I want to open up restaurants just like you. And so before we left Vietnam, um, this is well into where I was born already. She had three restaurants up wow. and running. Okay, so your grandfather had about 14. 13. 13. And then your mother had three, three. restaurants. And yes. this is all before you left? All before we left Vietnam. Okay. And so like when we did leave Vietnam in April, they left everything behind and just took suitcases and pictures. And for my brother and I, she just brought a suitcase of milk for us. Wow. So for the journey. Did you have family that was here or did you know anyone coming? We did. To um, States? My mom's next oldest sister. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of four, but um, her sister came to uh, the United States. She married a, a U.S. Army gentleman, mm -hmm. my uncle. And we knew that, I mean, we had choices, mm -hmm. I guess, to go where we wanted to, but we knew that we wanted to come to the United States so that my mom and her family could be reunited with the sister. The sister. Yeah. So it was just you and your brother then? You just have I one have, brother? I have three siblings. My okay. sister was born in the United States okay. after, uh, after we the moved move. here. Yes. So your family came and relocated to New Orleans? Uh, not originally. Okay. Um, we actually lived in New York with mm -hmm. my aunt in this t teeny tiny house. It was 22 of us in a one bedroom, wow. one bathroom house. Mm -hmm. And um, which is really neat because a lot of people don't know that I did live in Pennsylvania before we moved back up here in mm -hmm. 2005. Um, we were living in New York for probably a year. We, uh, my dad had found a job at uh, RCA. It was based out of Lancaster. And um, so we moved, my my dad moved our family to Lancaster so that him, my mom, could start working at RCA as just, you know, like a regular worker. Mm -hmm. And um, we did live in Lancaster probably for, just for a year. But um, 
I have my ties to Lancaster. Uh-huh. I mean, before we even moved back. Moved back. Yes. So when you're living with your family with 20 people in a small space, I can think of like a long list of all of the challenges that you would have. What are some of the blessings that you would have found in living in that small well, space? I was too young to, to even remember. remember mm-hmm. But I never thought in a million years that I would be able to feel that way. But when we moved up to Lancaster in 2005 after the hurricane uh, hit New Orleans, which mm-hmm. that leading up to it, uh, 20 of us stayed with my aunt in oh her goodness. house in Lancaster. Again? Yes. <laughs> it was like a family reunion yes, in a sense? Yes, it's really <laughs> surreal how it mm-hmm. happened. And it, it's like almost to the T, like 30 years later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, maybe, it's not an unco- maybe it's an uncomfortable question, but when you came back up to... Lancaster and live, we're living together and 20 people was were most of the family members still here like yes do, is, are your grandparents still living my grandmother uh at the time when we moved up here yes my grandparents okay. are still alive. my grandmother passed away in 2007 okay. but yes we all were living under one roof under again the same family okay when yes. you were down in New Orleans did is this when you like let your wings yeah I actually to- like ran my mom's restaurant okay. um I worked since I was little, like in the restaurant business itself, mm-hmm. um, from what I can remember, like just skating around in my roller skates, going from table to table, putting mm-hmm. napkins, <laughs> and then working my way up to like running the register and just learning everything about the restaurant business that I possibly can. I mean, mm-hmm. it's in my blood. I I couldn't deny it, uh-huh. you know. And after finishing school um, and getting married, my husband was like, well, what do you want to do? You know, like, what do you plan to do with your degree? Or what do you want to do? And I was like, I I think I'm just going to run my mom's restaurant and, mm-hmm. like, try to build it or whatever. And he's mm-hmm. like, you, you've never thought about opening up your own place? And I said, I guess I could. It was all over literally, like, just a dinner that him and I were having. We were having sushi. And from that conversation... We went to go that night. We went to go look at the space that was available that I knew Uh of that my friend had opened up a Vietnamese restaurant that didn't um, succeed. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I know a place that is up for rent. Mm -hmm. Let's just go look at it. And so I went to go look at it and um, called them the next day and made an appointment to come back to see the space. And that's when I approached my mom and I said, you know what? We want to open up our own place. Mm -hmm. We want to open up a number two because she had a restaurant in New Orleans Mm -hmm. and they were, she had been open since 1982. Mm -hmm. But um, from that moment, we opened up, I started the, I guess the family, I don't know what you call it, but just the dream, like the American dream that we had always dreamt of. Right. Yeah. So did your grandfather come into the kitchen and help you and guide you like with the with the menu or is this something that you decide like how did you decide okay well um the recipe that we use for pho now is still the same recipe that my grandfather used in vietnam oh, okay it's we it's never been written down it's just from generation to generation wow. and we haven't changed it mm-hmm. the only thing that's better now is the quality of meats and everything mm-hmm. that goes into the soup is so much better than what you could get in Vietnam or right. yeah mm-hmm. and so um that's the only thing that changed and there's a, our our yogurt mm-hmm. our homemade yogurt is still the same recipe that my grandfather made but everything else on the menu is my mom's creation wow okay yeah so she's, she's really like your she's brilliant in a sense yes in the kitchen okay yes that's interesting my mom sometimes is the same thing for me sometimes <laughs> so when you were when you were working in your own restaurant, how old were you? You were you were young, right? Well, you I opened I opened up my first restaurant in the year two thousand, mm-hmm. and um, and then three years later, we had the opportunity to open up another one. So my mm-hmm. husband and I were like, we can do this, and I got my siblings involved, mm-hmm. and I asked my sis. My sister had just finished school, and I said what are you going to do with your, you know, what do you plan to do with your career and stuff? I said, do you want to go into the restaurant business with me? And her and her husband were right in there with us. And Mm -hmm. that's when I got my brother involved as well. Okay. And so that's where we had multiple restaurants up and running in New Orleans. Very, we were very successful. Mm -hmm. And how many restaurants did you have? There was four that was up and running and one was slated to open uh, the week that Hurricane Katrina hit. Wow. And then... And then that happened. Yes. 
Well, I would, I really am eager to hear more about uh, the rest of the story, the journey. So um, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> 